Do you know how to classify various design rules? Do you know how to interpret design rule deck for any physical verification tool? Do you know Foundry helps you to understand any design rule? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below topics. What are design rules? DRC in backend of analog and ASIC design, both we will discuss. Then we will go to the topic of various mask layers and their alignment with respect to the significance of ERC, that is design rule check. Next, we will determine the design rule and its various category. Next, we will focus on the factors that influences the design rule. Next, we will do a classification and comparison of Micron versus Lambda rule. Then, we will see some example of intralayer and interlayer design rule. Finally, we will summarize our entire discussion. So, that's the menu for today. Let's begin. Understanding the mask layout transfer. Here is your design layout or GDS2 which you generally draw by hand and in case of ASIC you do it by your PNR tool. Finally the layout or the GDS2 is ready and you can see it's a hazy image. The reason I will tell you this GDS2 goes to the foundry and where we develop it on silicon and finally the circuit is realized in a HD quality version that is you can see the Mario character at left it is hazy and at right it is the HD quality. Now the reason I have kept this slide is to make you understand the importance of the mask layout transfer. The mask layout transfer does happen through the light diffraction and we use several mechanism in mask making process which are interlinked with the design rule check and that makes the mask ready for the light diffraction process so that when we develop the mask onto the silicon wafer our circuit under consideration becomes properly fabricated you can say in the HD quality. So here the left hand side and the right hand side left hand side is your mask that is the GDS2 and right hand side is your silicon. It's a typical analogy I have placed here. So now we will go back to the root where we will talk about what DRC does to make the layout or the mask to proper shape so that it gets developed with the lights diffraction process so that the actual silicon image of it is proper. This is not the only single thing that we do but also we do the basic electrical safety guidelines to the design rule check and there are many safety guidelines that are covered by DRC. We are done with this introductory slide so let's move on to the next slide. What are design rules? Design rules specify minimum feature size or spacing requirement or some geometric constraints between layers or masks of the same type or different types. So this is design rule. The next point is the design rules are mentioned in ASCII or PDF format in the design rule manual or sometime it is also called the design rule document. Each physical verification tool have its own format of reading the design rule. This point you must be very cautious because the design rule decks that you use for tool A, you may not use them for tool B. For tool B from other EDA vendor, you need a separate set of files. However, fundamentally the rules will be same in the two files. These two will be different because of the file format accepted by the physical verification tool. Design rule set are usually supplied by Foundry and comes along with the PDK or DK distribution. So generally when you order the standard cell library or your PDK or both, you will get the design rule decks inside those distribution. In case you do not have that time, you have to consult your ERM that is discussed in point two and you have to write your own design rule decks. Generally, this language of writing design rules is tickle or it may be a proprietary language uh, which may vary from one EDA vendor to another EDA vendor and it may vary from one tool to another tool. Technically the design rules are the interface between design engineer who is working at the SOC design house and the process engineer who is working in the foundry to make the wafer. So design rules acts as the missing link in between these two engineers. 
Design rules are written in a way that they can be forward compatible to upcoming generations. That means whenever we have a next technological progress in terms of technological node, they can be ported into the next technological node with minimal modification. Thus, the rule decks are written. It may come from your foundry or you may write your own as per your situation. Design rules ensure that design made through EDA software will perform reasonable after your circuit is fabricated. This means when the circuit is fabricated, you can get the expected performance and expected functionality from the circuit. So the design rules also ensure these things for your design of the circuit under consideration. So we are done with this particular slide. Hope you have understood what are the design rules as an introductory point. Let us move on to the next slide. VLSI design flow. Our entire VLSI design flow is split into two parts that is front end and back end part. So generally the DRC that is the design rule check using the design rules which are derived from the design rule manual are taken care into the back end part. So let us move on to the next slide to elaborate these things. So here we will talk about the backend flow in both analog that is IP design part and the SOC design part. So at left hand side there will be the IP or the analog design part and right hand side will be there will be the SOC design flow that is the backend only. Here in this direction of the arrow the flow will proceed. So in left hand side you can see the analog icon and right hand side you can see the SOC. So these are signifying what is placed where. First in analog or IP design we have the schematic design. Next, we do the layout design using handcrafted layout. Next, we perform the DRC and LVS checks once the layout is finished. Next, we do the RC extraction on the finished layout and cleaned DRC and LVS on that layout. Then we go thorough physical verification of the layout and the RC extracted netlist. Finally, we go for its electrical characterization and or or its delivery. This is the back end flow mainly only the first line is for the front end and the rest of the part is for the back end in the analog or the IP design. And right hand side here we start with the front end design. We are not talking much more in the SOC part and we are directly jumping to the back end. So back end start with the four planning and PNR and next we have the DRC and the LVS and next we have the RC extraction. STA and physical verification, formal verification and sign off. Now all these things will go through and you will and your design will pass through all these stages which is very very similar to the uh, analog part only the difference after the RC extraction is the STA which is not present in the IP design and also in the right hand side you can see the formal verification and sign off. So here you can see that the both cases the DRC and LVS in a single step we have mentioned so this DRC is very very important if you are doing a block level design that is a IP design or an analog design or a SOC level design in both cases the DRC checks are mandatory you cannot skip the DRC because it will harm your layout in final performance on silicon so the DRC here we have pinned out where in both in the analog or the IP design backend as well as in the SOC design backend at what stage the DRC is performed now let us move on to the next slide as we have finished our discussion on this slide Various mask layers. Here we will talk about generally present various mask layers which are used to create the layout. Now the, we talk about the layout. Layout is nothing but the layout of the mask and each part we create in the layout is a single mask. So what elements we can have in a layout? We will go through a brief description. This is a very limited example. However, in actual case you may find many layers in addition to whatever we are sharing here. So we start with the metal and then here we can have the metal 1, metal 2, metal 3, metal 4 and we can proceed further on as per the metal layers permitted in a particular technology node. Next we have the wells, we have the poly, we can have different type of wells and we can have the poly gate. Then we can have the contact as a cont layer and we can have the via which connects the two metal layers contacts generally do the contact with the silicon um, say source or drain gate there you need a contact layer to make the contact and via will connect the two metal layers in the routing stage that is in the BUL stage and contact is used in the FUL stage in case you do not know what is BUL and FUL I have explained in one episode you can find in the same playlist where you are watching this or you can go to the playlist of this channel and there you will find the VLSI FAQ there you will find 
find about the BUL and FUL processes under the silicon fabrication process. Let us proceed with our discussion here. Active layer. So here is NDIF and here is PDIF. And we have NFET and PFET. So these could be there, some could be not present, and some could be present. So it depends upon technology to technology. Generally, the NDIF and PDIF will be there. Next, we have the select layers, so N plus and P plus, and we go further on. So these are few typical layers that you will see in a layout or mask design generally. And there might be additional layers or variation of a particular say metal. You may find metal 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this you may find there. However, these are the typical layers that will come across. Now we are done with this example. Let us move on to the next slide. Determining the design rule. Here we have a NMOS and we have a PMOS. We are about to draw a layout of a PMOS circuit that is a NMOS and PMOS. Here is our N well. You already know about the N well from the previous slide. And here is the P select layer. So each layer which I am right now drawing contributes or act as a mask during the actual fabrication process. And DRC that is the design rule check plays a very important part when we are drawing this each mask like N well P select one on top of the other. DRC plays a very huge role. We will come later. Let us now see what we do sequentially and which mask we create by our hand. These things we create by our hand and uh, we proceed like that. So here it is our diffusion layer and next we go to here it is the n select layer this is what the n most and here we again have the diffusion layer next we have the contacts here we also have the contacts next we draw the poly it connection so you can see we draw different mask layers one by one in a layout tool in the same fashion that we are doing right now and each of these layers segments they will contribute to the mask process during the fabrication so each individual part that we are drawing will be taken as a mask and light will pass through that mask and accordingly the layer will be formed in the silicon through the semiconductor fabrication process now this is poly we have already talked about next we make the connection with the metal one and here we go towards the VDD this is metal one the first metal and here it goes to the ground so you also see the metal is here and we place a contact here again on the metal here we have drawn it and one more thing here that the when we are drawing here everything is not on scale however when we are drawing generally the P MOS is double the size of the N MOS that we take care because of the mobility matching of N type carrier and P type carrier now here we are done the drawing here you can see that we have used several layers and created their in Instances while making a CMOS while fabricating this individual layer or rather we call them mask will be used for the fabrication and one more thing here when we use each mask they will be used in a batch process say we are processing for metal one so every metal one will be processed in one go we are processing for poly every poly mask will be processed in one go so these are kind of batch processing for all of the segments that is present in a single layout which has come as GDS2 now we are done with this this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide mask layer sequence alignment so this is a very important slide why we are going through this it's a very simple slide simple to understand however you will understand the significance of drc when we draw each of the segment how the mask sequence is introduced while the fabrication process First, we have the N well. It is created first the N well mask segment. So you can imagine this all these segments we have used in the CMOS layout drawing. From there, we are taking one by one which are the sequence in actual semiconductor fabrication process. So N well is first run. Then we have the poly, we have the N diffusion, we have the P diffusion, we have the contacts. We have the metal. So this way, each individual segments are picked up from the layout and they are fabricated on the silicon through the semiconductor fabrication process. Whatever layout you are drawing by hand as a block level or the IP level, that will finally be used in the semiconductor fabrication process. That is the main motto of this slide. However, I am not saying that every sequence here mentioned is a correct one. For that, you have to follow a foundation process how they are processing what comes first and what comes second and what is the sequence so this is a typical hypothetical example how you can have the each segment that you have drawn getting fabricated and used as a mask on the actual silicon we are done with this example let's move on to the next slide factors influencing the design rule 
mask alignment accuracy. In the previous slide, we have shown you the different masks separately picked up and used for the fabrication. Now their alignment accuracy, we will talk about the importance. Inter and intra spacing of the mask, which are very important. How accurate is one mask aligned to another mask? So there are two different mask layers, say metal one and poly, so how they are aligned to each other. Now the DRC engine, which will read the design rules, will check the followings active to active spacing, weld to weld spacing, minimum channel length of the transistor, minimum metal weight, metal to metal spacing, metal field density for process using the CMP. It is a part of the semiconductor fabrication process. Next, it will check the ESD and the IO rules. So all these things the DRC will check. So ESD is also very important in circuit fabrication and its sustainability. All these things are checked through the design rule check. If you consolidate the previous slide and this slide, the meaning comes clearly to your mind why the design rule is very much important. Now we are done with this slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Design rule classification. Here we will categorize the design rules. In this direction, the flow will go down. So first, if we try to segregate the design rule with respect to the unit, we will find the micron rule and we will find the lambda rule. So micron rule is there and lambda rule is there. These two rules are there. Rule spacing. If we want to segregate or have variation with respect to the spacing, we will have the intralayer rules and we will have interlayer rules. That means we will have some rules that will be for two different kind of layers, which will talk about their spacing and all. And we will talk about the intralayer. That means for the same layer segment, how their spacing between them will be there. So these are the two typical type of categorization of the design rules. We are done with this slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Micron versus Lambda rule. Each semiconductor process step imposes a set of design rules on the geometric component size, relative position, etc. These rules have subtle differences. However, the common theme remains the same, mainly to use the proper geometric shape and separation to create a reliable manufacturing process. There are two major types of the design rule category. Micron rule. Here the layout constraints such as minimum feature size and minimum allowable feature separation are stated in terms of absolute dimensions in micrometers or nanometers. So this is an absolute unit, the micron rules. The lambda rules. Here the layout constraints are expressed in terms of a single parameter lambda. Hence, allow a linear and proportional scaling of all geometrical constraints. So this is a relative rule. So micron rule is an absolute rule. Lambda rule is a relative rule. So these are the two rule categories. Now we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Design rule example. Intralayer rule. Here in this particular slide, we will have some example. Let us begin. Here are three blocks of the drawn wells and for each we have the minimum length is 12. Its unit I am not specifying here. Whatever the unit may be, 12 unit of it should be the minimum dimension. Now, if two, the leftmost and the next one are on the same potential, they will have a difference of 5 unit. And in case they are on different potential, they will have a difference of 10 unit. So this is a typical example. Now we move over to poly. And these are the two poly segments if we draw in a layout. So the minimum size will be five units and interfacing will be five units. One thing has to be mentioned there. Values shown are here fictitious and educational purpose only. So here whatever value I am giving these are for your education purpose only and these are not taken from any design rule manual. However, if you go to a design rule manual, you will find similar examples with real values in actual design. So let us continue with our example here is an active layer two active layer are there minimum width is four and interspacing will be four metal one there are two segments minimum width four their spacing will be four select is there there are two select blocks minimum width is four and their intermediate spacing is three similarly metal two is here two segments and minimum width is six and their intermediate spacing will be six. So here I have given a hypothetical example with hypothetical values. If you consult a real design rule manual, you will find this kind of rules with real actual values. Why I have given because you can see the patterns are very repetitive for each and every layer. So their minimum weight, their minimum spacing. So these are kind of things you will find in the design rule manual, which is in ASCII that is in the text format. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. 
design rule example interlayer so here we will give a similar example as the previous slide and here we will talk about the interlayer design rules so this is n well this is pdiff this is our poly now here i emphasize again values shown are here fictitious and educational purpose only so values are not from real design rule manual however if you consult a real design rule manual you will find actual values for similar cases so between poly and pdf the minimum spacing should be 2 this direction this should be 8 and here this should be 4 and this should be 6 so this way the values of interlayer design rules are specified you will get explicit details in the design rule manual if you cross compare the design rule decks and the design rule manual you will understand all these things in terms of the actual layout as well as in written text so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide typical category of drc rules here in this slide we will talk about the different subcategories of each of the design rules that we can find intralayer what the intralayers here design rules will contain width spacing length and width of transistor gate interlayer they will contain enclosures overlaps separation between two wires on the same level widths of wires contact pad for vias well and substrate contacts cross section of vias size of wells area antenna rule and density rule so antenna rule is another special thing i can make another separate episode on antennas for now you can have this set of typical category inside the design rules so once you have the real experience of the design rules you will understand the significance of this slide so these are the types of the design rules otherwise if you go through the entire design rule deck and compare the design rule manual you will get lost there will be so many rules because they are split into each individual rule however if you if you want to categorize them for your easy remembrance then this slide will be very important to you we're done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide summary so let us summarize whatever we have discussed so far all design rules are predefined by foundry design rules are available through design rule manual abbreviated as drm in text that is ascii format Design rules are interpreted by any physical verification tool through tickle coding or tool specific proprietary language. Layout tools may have on the fly live DRC check during your layout drawing process. So this is a very advanced process and nowadays I think all the layout tools have this thing inbuilt. To understand any DRC violation, you need to cross reference DRC rule code and DRM. So this is the very important point because if you have a DRC deck of say, uh, say any physical verification tool to understand that you have to cross reference the DRM that is the design rule manual or design rule document. That's how you interpret or understand the rule. And in the same way, this thing you will be using when you are debugging any DRC error. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes, put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.